Hello, this is Mr. Buffington from Simplify Academy, and we are looking at opposites and absolute values today. Hopefully this lesson I'll be able to explain what they are and show you in a visual way so that you remember the difference between opposites and absolute values. One of the key things is, of course, the practice that we are going to do afterwards. So let's talk about opposites first. Opposites are basically the changing of the sign. So the opposite of negative 4 is positive 4. The opposite of 1 and 1 half is negative 1 and 1 half. It's changing the sign. Now what it looks like visually as you can see on this number line is it is the same distance from 0 only measured in the opposite direction. It's the same distance from zero, only measured in the opposite direction. That's what opposites are. And that's what they look like. The easiest thing to do with opposites is just change the sign. If it's a positive number, change it to a negative. If it's a negative, change it to a positive. That's the easiest way to switch between numbers when you're finding opposites. When we're talking about absolute values, we're kind of doing the same thing, only it's going to look a little bit different. What absolute value looks like is if we have these two negative numbers and these two positive numbers, right? we know that they're the same distance from zero and that they're the opposite direction, right? What absolute value does is it says, what is the measurement from zero to where you are, all right? What's the distance from zero? And we only measure distance in positives. So the distance from zero to negative one is one. It's the same distance as its opposite. Just like the distance to three and one half is three and a half, whether it's positive or negative. So with absolute value, you're always measuring a distance, so it's always going to end up being positive. That's the difference. With, a, with opposites, you're switching signs. With absolute value, you're basically always changing the number to being positive. If it's positive, it stays positive. If it's negative, you make it positive. That's the difference. Absolute value is a measurement, and opposites are just changing the sign to the opposite sign. Let's practice a little bit here. Um, if I ask you to state the opposite of negative 4 and 1 half, what would you say? What's the opposite of that? The opposite is just changing the sign, right? So the opposite of negative 4 and 1 half is positive 4 and 1 half. It's the opposite. What's the opposite of five? Well, it starts out positive, so the opposite is negative five. That's how it works. That's it. With opposites, you just change the sign every time. With absolute values, if I said, what's the absolute value of negative two and a half? You would say positive two and a half. The absolute value of seven is seven. See, with absolute value, it's always a positive answer. So if, the, if it starts out negative, you are switching the sign. If it starts out positive, you're keeping the sign the same. Absolute value is always positive. And I know teaching these two things together sometimes gets a little confusing, but it's a really good way to show that you understand it. So let's do a little bit of matching. I want you to select the absolute value of 1 half and the absolute value of negative 12. Try that out. What's the absolute value of both of those numbers? Just a quick hint, absolute value is always positive. So the absolute value of 1 half is 1 half. The absolute value of negative 12 will be positive 12. Notice the results in this case are both positive. That's because absolute value is a measurement, and measurements are always positive. 
right? I wouldn't say I walked negative three feet today, even if you walked backwards or if you walked from right to left or from left to right, it doesn't matter. You walk three feet. It's not a lot to walk and um, unless walking is really hard for you. And if that's the case, then walking three feet might be a big accomplishment. But either way, you're walking three feet. You're not walking a negative three. And that's because that's this absolute value. All right, let's look at opposites. What's the opposite of one half? And what's the opposite of negative 12? Try it out. Think about that for a second. All right, the absolute value was always ending in positive. The opposite is just changing the sign. So if I start with a positive one half and I'm asking for the opposite, it's going to be negative one half. If I start with a negative, the opposite will be a positive. All right. This is what the worksheet and the quiz are going to help you practice. So a couple things to remember when it's opposite, you change the sign. It works the same with all rational numbers. If it's absolute value, it ends up always being positive. Again, both of these work with all rational numbers. It doesn't matter if we're talking about a fraction or a whole number or an integer. It's going to work with all of those things. These are the rules to remember. Go ahead and practice using that worksheet. Good luck on the quiz. Have a wonderful day.